minus three, two, one. We have ignition. Science and photography go hand in hand and have since the 19th century. The word scientist was used for the first time in uh, 1834 and the word photography was first used in 1839 and ever since then the two of them have been symbiotically uh, related to each other. It's hard to imagine science without photography and it's impossible to imagine photography without science. Seeing Science is a book that takes a new kind of look at science photography instead of focusing and obsessing only on photographs that are made by scientists. It looks at those, but it looks at how the sciences are represented to the public as well. Because science has become so important in our lives, our everyday lives, in our futures and the future of the planet, you know, too, it's important for people to look at and understand and feel more comfortable with science photography. And this book is important because it does it in a way that no other book has done it before. I mean, one of the images in the book that kind of fascinates me and really changes the way that people think was Earthrise, which is a very, it's probably the best known science image ever that was taken on the Apollo 8 mission on Christmas Eve in 1968. And that photograph kind of kick-started the late 20th century environmental movement in a way that nothing else could have but a photograph as startling as that. These are photographs that help us think about who we are, what we're doing, you know, what's going on in our lives, what comes next, right? And it's through photography that you start to think about these amazing specific things in terms of data, but also very big issues that impact our world. Doing this book has changed my life and certainly changed the way I look at photographs. And I've been working with photographs for decades and doing a lot of exhibition and book projects. As a visually engaged person, I'm really interested in looking and you realize that science is all about looking and this lets you think about that and this lets you experience that. And it's the consequentiality of these kinds of photographs that are, they're, they were start, it's startling to me. This book looks at science photography in a very broad sense. So it's not just photographs made in the course of science, but it's also how science is represented in public. And so you start to also look at how are scientists themselves represented? Like who gets photographed as a scientist? Who doesn't, right? And so the book looks at the role of how women are represented in the sciences. It touches on how race and, and difference and cultural difference is represented in the sciences and, um, and also doesn't necessarily take science images as a given, but makes you understand that sometimes they're constructed. By taking a step back and looking at science photography from a little bit of a distance and with a little bit of a more critical perspective, right, it, it starts to touch on issues that don't normally get touched on in books like this. Aperture.